now we're going to get into a little discussion about what we think is the biggest thing in VFX tech right now. I think it's impossible, impossible not to mention <laughs> the recent um, announcement that you have that there's early access available to Unreal Engine 5. Yeah. I mean, Epic keeps doing these demos and keeps changing the game, I suppose, in game engines. Um, and then with the latest UE5 stuff, they really showed off, um, as Hugo knows, the Nanite virtualized yeah. Yeah. micro polygon geo and Lumen, the global yeah. illumination solution, plus some other things. Hugo, what, what was your takeaway, big takeaway from the demo and availability of UE5? So I... I think, you know, I've been playing with Unreal 5 now for like a week and a half, a week. Ever since it came out, I installed it right away. And, yep. and offers, obviously, I had to like reboot to Windows because I'm a Mac guy, but it doesn't really run on Mac. <laughs> <laughs> the Unreal 5 demo and also what they've released doesn't run on a Mac currently. It will run on a Mac. And we'll talk about that in a second. But obviously, you can't deny how impressive this is. And like I said, the collision course between offline rendering and real-time rendering is really happening there. And... Both Nanite with the virtualization uh, geometry feels like we are finally reaching a point where, on, at least on the video games industry, we don't need to do low poly version of, of geometry. You know, because in the past, mm. you know, for people who don't know, when you're playing games, usually you know you do a really high resolution ZBrush model, and then you have to go back and make it simpler and simpler and simpler so it can actually run on an engine. Otherwise, it's gonna yeah. like not run at 60 or at 30 frames per second even. So that is enti that entire thing is off the window now. Like Unreal somehow managed to develop a virtualized um, uh, way of, of having geometry exactly the same as the original. And just to give you like an idea of this, I was reading through their documentation. We're going to put it on the show notes because I think the documentation is really impressive. If you consider like a big, big piece of geometry, imagine a high poly example of a, of a, like of a, of a stone or a rock, which would be, let's say, let's say 148 megs as big, you know, like that's a, the size of the geometry together with the LODs, together with the texture, together with the AOVs, everything. That's what we're talking about a rock that is 148 megs, very high poly with millions of poly, polygons, which would run quite poorly on Unreal 4, for example, or any other engine like yep. Unit or something. This new virtualization converts this to somehow the same exact looking thing. It looks exactly the same. I saw in the documentation side by side, still has a million polygons or triangles in this case with the Nanite, but instead of being 148 megs, it's only 19 megs. So that means it's seven wow. and a half size less. It's seven times smaller which means that the machine has to load it, it's faster, compressing and compressing, it's faster. It, that means the entire world can be seven times more detailed because it can load at that kind of speed. Mm. So that's just one of the revolutions that comes from Nanite, which I think is incredibly impressive, this way of virtualizing it in a way that if you are really far away, the geometry, the geometry is really simple, but if you're really close, it's really detailed. And the, the traveling between this visualization is almost invisible. I tried it myself. Like you zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, and you can barely see it, but you still see detail. But when you zoom in, it's like the most detailed thing in the world. So, it, you know. It really <laughs> blows people away, doesn't it? It's like they can't believe yeah. that. Yeah, we're, 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 we're in this phase. This. Yeah, we're in this like, oh my God, <laughs> uh, phase. But yeah. I, I've passed no, that I phase, know. Ian. I passed that phase already. I'm not on the oh my God <laughs> phase anymore. I'm on the phase where there's some problems. I'm on that phase now. Okay. Because. Okay. What are those? Yeah, so uh, before I talk about the problems, there's the other thing as well, which is the. The, the global illumination, the, the, I only want to talk about two things, Nanat and Lumen. We'll talk about Lumen in a second. Yeah. So, um, because that's also very impressive. So if you go through the documentation, you'll see that Nanite is not as, as it's going to become a problem a little bit, unless they fix it, of course, uh, especially because, you know, there's a couple of, uh, of, of things. For example, it doesn't support translucency. You can't have transparent objects. That means you can't have glass, you can't have windows, you can't have any of that. You can't have masked, ma uh, masked materials. You can't have non-rigid deformation. We cannot have skeleton animation. 
And it works really bad with grass, leaves, or hair. So really small things become just one mesh. So the way that Nanat works is that it just converts it to one big blob instead of making several strands of hair. So it does have all those caveats. It works really beautifully with solid objects like rocks. And that's why when you look at the mm. demo, it's just rocks. Everything is rocks. You know, it's like a huge landscape like the, the Grand Canyon. So there's a lot of limitations. There's also other limitations. I was watching a lot of streams and playing around with it. You can't also paint directly to the textures or paint directly to the, to the actual geometry or project to the geometry because the geometry doesn't exist. So when you like actually go back to it and, and put Unreal with the viewer of looking at geometry, it's not there. It's a virtualized geometry that happens at render time. So there is a lot of things that are going to bring in complexity to current pipelines because current pipelines are so used to having this kind of ZBrush, you know, um, uh, um, painting, and you have like all these stages of, of CG yeah. which are not used anymore because of Nanite. So I, I think there are some problems that I'm sure Unreal is trying to solve, but they ha ha something had to give, you know, because but, it's... But Hugo, are you aware of... I mean, it's still in... It's not released. I, I know, um, you, I, I know, I know. But you know what that means. Nothing is released these days. Nothing. Everything is an alpha. <laughs> everything is well, a beta. What I, what I was wondering is, is, as part of getting it out there, you know, it's it's still being developed. Maybe those things are high on the pro list. Maybe they're not. Maybe we just don't know. Um and, oh, they've, they've done this uh, in the past. Hey, man, they had like a few years ago on, on Unreal 4, they had this beautiful, I can't remember the name, they had this beautiful global illumination system that they talked and talked and talked. I can't remember the name of it. And, but then they dropped it. It never came to fruition. So it happens that sometimes they can't right. reach what they wanted to do, you know, or doesn't yeah. work out or doesn't pan out, you know. So it, it could happen, you know, we'll see you. You're absolutely right. I'm being too critical. They haven't released it yet. But I, I feel like people can't really think that this... Because uh, I'm talking from a visual effects point of view. Yeah. I see all this talk about, oh, we don't need rendering anymore. Oh, we don't need Arnold anymore. Oh, we don't need Redshift anymore. It's not really like that. Because, you know, you still need transparency. You still need grass. You still need hair. You need all those other things. And so... The real-time engine is really impressive. It's really good, but it's not really going to replace offline rendering yet because because of those issues. There's you need to understand that on the on the visual effects uh, world, we are working on an uncompromised approach. You know, everything is brute force. Everything has to be highest quality yeah. on everything. A reflection can't be half res. It has to be full res. You know, did so it, you know that's it, the thing. Yeah. It's really interesting, though, if you think about how you're talking about it, you're talking about it as if it's going to be, which it will be and wants to be, adopted as part of a VFX pipeline. Yeah, but that's going to happen. Of course, yes. Happen. But at the moment, I think, as I understand it, the access is to game developers, yes, for example. Absolutely. It doesn't mean no, everyone else can do it. So, But I, I actually like listening to you talk about it like that, Hugo, as if... It's for games, but it also is for live action. But that's what they want to do. Like, look at what they're doing with virtual production. production. So they, they are exactly. aiming to that market. It's just that they're not Obviously. there yet. You know, they're not there yet. Yeah. They still have the ACES pipeline to take care of it. They still have all these problems yeah. with, <clears throat> with Nanite that they need to solve. But... Obviously, their intention is to reach a point where you have a photoreal system and you're literally like a DOP or a director just putting lights up and putting a scene up. And that's it. That's their objective. You can clearly see that. And, and if you're right now, if you are a low budget production or if you're doing an indie film or if you're doing a, a much smaller production in scale, Unreal is an amazing thing to use because it's free. It has all these mega scans that are also free, which you can use. It has the rendering. It's in real time. You can use a laptop if you want to. So for all these kind of like new filmmakers, this is an opportunity to do films like never before. Oh, yeah. You know, like never before, because a lot of these low budget productions don't need to be as good as a visual effects production, you know. So we're going to we're going to be flooded in the market by that, by a lot of creativity, a lot of projects, a lot of bad stuff as well of course there will be a lot of just tech demos and stuff that goes nowhere but i think that's going to have a huge implication to visual effects because clients and people will get used to this look they will get used to the photo real look they'll get used to seeing it right away 
And when they have to wait for it, it's going to become a problem. You know, when when you have a client that is used to Unreal and then they, they go to a visual effects house and, oh, yeah, you need to wait. Uh, over the weekend, we're going to render it. And the guy is going to like, oh, what do you mean? Over the weekend? What do you, why, can't, why can't I watch it now? <laughs> you know, so, so this is going to become a problem for the lower productions are going to start looking really good. And then the higher productions are going to have to kind of stop they're going to have to start implementing some of it as well on their production. So I, I think definitely there is like a collision course here. And I think Epic is, they know what they're doing. I, I feel like they are trying very hard to go into this world and they can, because they have all this sweet money from, from, <laughs> you know, from both the, the game from uh, Fortnite, but also from all the, all the, um, the licensing, you know, so. Right. But, but also clearly Epic has employed and, there's people running the company that I feel like are ex VFX people or ex filmmakers, yeah, or current filmmakers, and that is probably part of the motivating factor, yeah, to make this much more applicable to that world as well as games, right? Absolutely, and and that's why yeah. I think they're aiming for visual effects because I have so many friends now that used to work at the mill at Framestore that are now working there, and a lot of them are artists. Mm -hmm. They're actually not technicians, and. That is the key factor. If they can bring in the artist to explain how it should look. And you can already see the kind of like first, you know, I'm going to give a segue now talking about Lumen, for example. So you can already see that Lumen is definitely something coming from a mind of a creator, not from a, because from a, if you look at it, Lumen is supposed to be a real time global illumination, you know, so that means all the, all the lights are bouncing in real time. We've had global illumination in real time before, of course but not to this level, to this, this is a photo real global illumination. And global illumination has always been the kind of holy grail of visual effects because it's what makes something real, you know, because it's the bounce of all the lights and together with the materials and the reflections of those materials, but it's of course a bit different. And I think you can kind of see that Lumen is coming from there. So just so people understand the complexity of this, Lumen is really, I think it's a great response to the, some of the problems we're having right now with hardware retracing. You know, hardware retracing has a lot of issues. Hardware retracing is expensive. You need like a graphic card to run it. No one can get a hands on a graphic card because they're all uh, bought by by uh, scalpers on eBay and and by people doing mining. So I feel like this idea of doing a, a, a Lumen, which is a software based ray tracing that can also use hardware, it's brilliant. Mm. Because, because it's software-based, that means they don't need the graphic card if they don't want to. They can still use it on software and not have to depend on people having to have RTX cards, you know. So they can still achieve some kind of ray tracing, some kind of global illumination without having that card. But I, I feel like Lumen having the GI in real time, just to give the audience a bit of an idea... I know it's ridiculous to talk about, oh, global illumination, that's such an old thing. And it is true, like, global illumination has been existing since 2000, you know, like, in the CG world, you know, the first major film using global illumination was Shrek, Shrek 2, you know, as like from 2004. But you guys need to understand that I'm talking about real-time GI, real-time global oh, yeah. illumination, where you bring, like, if you go to Unreal 5 right now and you, you move a, like, if you move an enclosed space with, like, walls and you move one wall out, all the light spills into the room in real time. And that is a game changer for directors, for cinematographers, and for artists to make their scenes. That means anything you put in in real already will look kind of for real without almost no effort. You know, without almost no effort. And that's the, the beauty of Lumen, I think. But there's also like a caveat I want to say to everyone here because I, I see all these countless videos on YouTube about tech demos really of how Unreal 5 works, people can't forget that it doesn't matter how beautiful Lumen works and how beautiful Nanit works, you still have to be an artist, you still need to know photography, you still need to know uh, composition and color and, and, and have that kind of like feel to it. People can't forget this is just a software, you know, I really want to remind everyone uh, that it doesn't matter how good Unreal looks and you just ha you have to, for it to do something with it, you still have to have an idea and a story and something, you know? So that's one thing I kind of like, because I, I see people very excited about it, but there's no point of being excited if you have nothing to say with it, you know, that's the thing as well. Uh, but yeah, I know I'm, I'm divigating. Like, it's a cautionary tale. Yeah, I, it is. I mean, I think you're right, except 
maybe part of the point is that it gets people somewhere faster yeah to then iterate and do more absolutely um, absolutely and yeah i mean i've i i think those points you make can be relevant to any kind of Absolutely. Production. No, 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 absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm yeah. a very software agnostic people. Although people know me as the new guy, I'm not the new guy at all. I use so many softwares in my life and I'm very software agnostic and I've always been very software agnostic. I don't like to be just be stranded in one software. You know, I use all the thing. I use everything I can find mm. to do anything I need. But one thing, you know, I, I feel like people should really go and look at the documentation. Unreal has been very honest about everything. If you look at the documentation, it mo mentions all the problems that it has with Nanite, all the problems that it has with Lumen, all the issues that exist, and people really need to read the documentation so that they can understand the limitations of what they're signing up to, you know, because it is very different from an offline rendering. But one thing I want to talk to you about, Ian, about this is the virtual production, because this will have a massive impact on virtual production because that is a different beast altogether. And I think Nanite and, and Lumen will make huge progresses on the quality of what you see on virtual production. You know, that's the thing. Yeah. There. Do you, you, I guess you mean uh, multiple things, but the LED volume yeah. type virtual exactly. production that we yeah, know yeah. from Mandalorian. Yeah. Yeah. If if the imagery on those walls Which they don't use Unreal, basically. by the way. They don't use Unreal now, right now. They've shifted from Unreal on the last season, by the way. Right. ILM yeah. has shifted yes. to use its own yeah, yeah. game engine, yeah, yeah. real time engine called yeah. Helios. Yeah. But but other productions use you know, I'm just Unreal mentioning this other... because a lot of people still yeah. think it's Unreal. A lot of people still think yeah. that because of the early demos yeah. and everything, you know, so but I guess, yes, you're right. In general, the fidelity of imagery on those yep. LED walls means that even more in-camera visual effects shots can look like yeah. in like proper as if you went out to the desert or some alien planet to film. Um, yeah, yeah. Although the limitations know, are still there, you still have the Moe effect on the screens, you still have yeah. the seams on the screens, but having real-time GI and having this kind of level of perfection with Nanite really allows you to be more in focus on virtual production because right now they use all these tricks of, de of depth of field to try to like make it look more real and to try to kind sure. of uh, make it more believable but having so much more detail allows you to actually be a bit sharper on those virtual production sets and actually integrate it more it's not perfect yet but it is definitely i i'm, I'm i feel like it will really step the game of virtual production quality content of the renders that you see on the backgrounds for sure, you know. Oh yeah, totally agree.